how is emotion controlled? Well, emotion, which remember is energy that's allowed to be in motion yes. <laughs> by the soul. So therefore it's controlled by the soul's will. Mm -hmm. So it's not controlled by anything external to the soul. And it's not controlled by the mind or the brain. It's controlled by the will, how the will of, of the soul is exercised. Uh -huh. So that's pretty concise, definite answer there. <laughs> and it is. Perhaps if we give some examples. Yeah. Um, so, so for example, if we have a thought come up in our mind, well, that's being controlled by the soul's will. Uh -huh. So let's say the thought is, I would like to go and get a cake. <laughs> right? Yeah. We don't know perhaps the reason why we want to get a cake. We just feel like a cake. This is the term we use. Yeah. I feel like ice cream. Yeah. I feel like a cake. I yeah. feel like some alcohol. I yeah. feel like a drink. I yeah. feel... And these are all feelings. They are all feelings yes. generated by the soul's will. Yes. Now, the, the soul wanted that thing for a reason. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is the secret of what we need to find, the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Once we find the reason, we can, we can correct any behaviour that we feel is unreasonable. Yep. So, so, for example, a person who's gluttonous eventually becomes very fat, right, and becomes very unhealthy. And, and obviously their will of their soul is, I need more food, I need more food, I need more food. More food, in fact, than their body can even handle to digest and, and so it stores it all as fat. Now, obviously something's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not the body that's wrong. Mm. It's, there's, there's an exercise of something in the soul saying, I want more, I want more, I want more, I need more, I need more, I need more, mm -hmm. when you don't need more, mm -hmm. right? So what you need to do is find out how you're exercising your will because mm -hmm. it's your will that's caused you to decide that you need more or you feel like you want more or whatever. Yeah. So then you would then you'd need to go, okay, what does eating give me that I don't get from anything else? Because yeah. that's what my soul wants, obviously. Yes. And then we start seeing associations between eating and safety, eating and security, eating and the allaying of fear, eating and the suppression of anger yeah. and so forth and so forth. And once we find those particular correlations, yeah. now we have ability to release the causal emotion inside of the soul that control is controlled by the will mm -hmm. to be suppressed at this point. And we now allow its expression. So we allow our soul to express itself emotionally, which releases an emotion which then no longer drives the will in a negative direction. Mm. Yeah. So we've said um, that the will is emotional, mm -hmm. uh, it's controlled by the soul. Mm -hmm. And in that example you gave, you were talking about wanting the will or the soul's emotions generating a desire for a substance or a food or something mm -hmm. um, and that creating ill health. Mm -hmm. So in that example, when we know that the soul controls everything that happens mm -hmm. and where re our result is ill health, mm -hmm. the soul's will is actually acting to suppress or try to control an emotion, isn't it? Correct. Through it's, this substance. Correct. It's, it's doing one of three things. It's in denial of the emotion, it's resisting the emotion, or it's suppressing the emotion, yeah. whether consciously or not. Uh -huh. Whether we intellectually know it's happening or not, it is happening. Yep. Yep. And so... That's an attempt, really, to control emotion. Yes. Um, and it's the soul... Or to experience alternative emotions. Ah, great. So, for example, you know, a person who feels a lot of sadness, for example, mm -hmm. obviously it wants to feel the release of their sadness, but they don't want to go through the process of releasing it. They don't yeah. want to go through crying. Yeah. So what they do is they look for an alternative emotion that they can rely upon. Yeah. Now, to do that with a substance, you'd probably turn to alcohol, mm -hmm. for example, because alcohol is a great way of suppressing or no being nostalgic about sadness yeah. without actually releasing it. Yeah. So, so the soul will be drawn towards alcohol abuse, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. when it's suppressing sadness. Mm. Mm. So we could actually use physical substances or our mind to try to control Yes. Emotion. The reality is physical substances, as we'll learn later about addictions in other questions, yeah. physical substances are far more reliable than anything else. <laughs> you know, because when you say reliable, what do you mean? Well, they're reliable in the sense that you're not reliant on another person yeah. to give you the satisfaction that a physical substance can bring you. Mm -hmm. This is why physical substances are the emotional choice mm -hmm. of the person in addiction. Yeah. 
and, and we like physical substances because they're reliable. They mm. always bring the same result generally. Yeah. Now, of course, that's, it's like we slowly desensitise to the physical sub substance after a while yeah. and we need more and more and more of it, which causes our degradation. But, but generally, that's far more reliable than relying on a person to give mm. you a feeling mm. or, or rely on the environment in some way or the government to give you a feeling. You know, that's sometimes highly unreliable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what we do is we gravitate towards the most reliable substance that helps us avoid the feeling. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is the expression of our will. We're, not, we're attempting to avoid the feeling, yep. which is, that we're, we, in other words, what we're doing is we're attempting, using our soul's will, yep. we're attempting to avoid the expression of an energy that's inside of us emotionally. We're suppressing it or resisting it or denying it. And as a result of our choice to do those things, we gravitate towards things that assist us in the denial of that emotion. Mm -hmm. And we look for substances that will actually substitute feelings in lieu of the emotion that we do not wish to experience. So even in my family, if things were a bit tense, my mum would say, Let's all have sing a, a song. Or, yeah, or Let, we'll have a cup of tea you used to do with me. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. That was a physical substance. So she'd say, let's all sing a song. So Yeah, so she's trying to feel happy and upbeat. Correct. When really, when really there's a lot of tension. Sadness and or tension sadness or, or and or fear, fear triggered. There. So, so that's her go-to. That's her, that's her addiction. Her, yeah, <clears> yeah. <throat> so that's her addiction. That's... Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. That's her expression of her will. Correct. Her will is that she wants to suppress the feeling and the only way she learnt as a child to suppress certain feelings was to revert to music. Mm. And so a person reverts to music under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And music is a physical thing, something that's quite reliable. Right? It's not like you're relying on another person. Although when she says, let's all <laughs> sing, she is relying on other people <laughs> yeah, as well. So yeah, there's yeah. Two, two addictions now. But... But the reality is for most people, we revert to physical addictions, uh, usually in preference to other forms of addictions in order to suppress the soul's emotion. And that is the soul exercising its will to do so. Yeah, so um, I think what I was... And we can exercise our will in a different direction. Okay. We can. We could choose to, instead of going for the substance that suppresses the emotion, we could, tend, we could choose to go for something that actually helps us experience the emotion. Yeah. We could absolutely. choose to exercise our will in a completely different direction. But that is going to require a force of will that opposes your previous will. Yeah, and a that, change of a will. A change of will, if you like. And uh, people find change of will quite difficult mm. because there are emotional reasons often that cause our will to be exercised in certain directions. Yeah. And usually that, uh, the biggest uh, problem is the desire to avoid pain. Yeah. That is the biggest motivator, generally, in a person stopping from using their will in a loving direction. Yeah. It would have to be the biggest one, wouldn't it? Why else would yes, anyone um, do that? Well, you know, the pain could be external or internal. Yeah. It, it doesn't, uh, the source of the pain might be, vary. Yeah. Uh, but generally, yes, the biggest problems that we face within our soul are the avoidance of pain. Some people also have the avoidance of pleasure mm. for certain reasons as well. In other words, that they may have been shamed in the past, so there's pain I was underneath say, that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, generally, it's the avoidance of pain. Or if we be more specific, it's the avoidance of the experience of pain. Yes. That causes us, or in other words, the experience of the emotion. Yes. That causes us to then judge the emotion and suppress the emotion. Yeah. The reality is emotions don't have any positive or negativeness in them. Mm. So if we're angry or sad or, or ashamed, or, none of these things are negative or positive emotions they become negative or positive through our experience, through what we choose to do with our will. So this is why we must understand that it's our will that is the controller <laughs> of the expression of our emotion. Great. So um, what I'm hearing you say is that the will controls emotion, mm -hmm. that the will is emotional and it's all based in the soul. Yes. And, we can and by use, the way, yep. it, we must say that even if you have no emotional injuries, you can still use your will negatively. Okay. So we must understand that the exercise of will 
and the potential of its use in a negative or positive direction is completely independent of any emotional injury that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, having emotional injuries exacerbates the, pro the tendency to use our will negatively. Yep. But we can't use emotional injuries as the excuse or the reason why we used our will negatively. Because the reality is we can use our will negatively even if we have no emotional injuries. Mm -hmm. So we must understand that it's the exercise of our will that is of supreme importance here. And in fact, one of the things God is, God's teaching us by having us live on the earth and then in the spirit world is how to exercise our will in a voluntary loving manner. Definitely. You know, it's one of the biggest it's reasons the why we exist. Yeah. And for most people, we choose to use our will in a negative manner even if, and, and it's independent of, our emotional injuries that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if we do have emotional injuries, it does assist us to use our will because the emotional injuries justify the use of the will in a negative direction. Yeah. So the emotional injury tells you, you should do this. You should use your will in a negative direction. Mm. So you place most people in a, a situation where there's a war or conflict. If they have been personally abused you know, or harmed, or let's make it even more strong, strong, strongly stated, let's say their child has been personally abused or harmed, and they have an opportunity to abuse or harm the person or the child of the person who harmed their child, most people would use that as a justification, the original violence, as a justification for the unloving behaviour. Yeah. And that's independent of what the emotion inside of them is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they could choose to do that even if there were no emotions inside of them about the situation before it began. No injured emotion. No injured emotion yeah, yeah, inside emotion. of them before it began. They could make that choice mm. to use their will in that direction. Mm. So this is why we must understand that the will is the controller of what happens in, with regard to emotional expression. Yeah. It's not something that's automatic, as people would tend to su suggest. It's not, when I say automatic, it's not something where people can go, oh, I didn't know why, why I, just, I just felt like I had to go and do it. it was, it was, let's say oh, it was a terrible thing. Yeah. And they went and did it. And they just said, oh, I just felt like I had to go and do it. Well, no, there was something inside of the soul that determined that the expression of the will in that direction was positive, even while it might be negative. Yes. So they, the, there was a belief yeah. inside of the person at the time that that was the best use of their will. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you're talking about basically from what I, from what I hear you talking about, um, the the emotion is controlled by the use of our will. Mm -hmm. That and we can. What you've talked about is that we can use that will to experience emotion or to suppress emotion. Yes, and, and so and it's independent. Our choice is independent of what emotional injuries we have. Yes. So yes. this is a very important part of it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's completely down to our will. Um, and then there's another, I suppose, in the notes that I have in front of me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the mind can try to influence the soul's will but will never be successful. So I suppose I hear you talking about two... There's two different ways we can try to control our emotion. One is it's soul-based and that will be successful mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other is mind-based and that's never going to be successful. No, it's going to have limited success because the soul will always be dominant and that's a characteristic of the human soul. So whatever is in the soul will retain dominance. So if inside of your soul there is an emotion saying, I want to go and do something negative, yeah. then then doesn't matter how much you exercise your mind, sooner or later you're going to do that negative thing. Yeah, right. So you're going to have to use your mind to find the reason why you do that negative thing that exists inside of your soul and release that emotion. Once you release that emotion, there won't be the gravitation towards yeah. that negative action. Yeah. But it still doesn't mean that you'll take a positive one because that is dependent upon your will. Yeah. So you will, you can have no emotional injuries inside of your soul at all and still use your will negatively. Mm. Yep. Mm. So we need to understand that. Yeah, so I guess I'm thinking about... And can I also say, sorry, y yeah. we can also have heaps of emotional injuries in our soul and use our will positively. Mm. 
That's the beauty of our will. Our will can be independent of our emotional injuries. Yeah. But if we use our will to release the negative emotional injuries that cause us to take negative choices and decisions, that would be even more powerful if you think about it. Well, mm -hmm. isn't that the only way from what you've just said? We can have a lot of emotional injuries, but if we use our will of the mind to no, try... No, it's the will of the soul being used. It's the will of the... It's exercise, the will of the soul being used. So, so it's a, going like... I keep on doing this particular thing that I know is bad. Mm -hmm. I have decided that I am going to do everything in my power now to, to make sure I never do that again. Yeah. Now that's the use of my will. That is an emotionally soul-driven desire, if it's real, to do that. Yeah. However, I must also understand that perhaps I have emotional injuries in my soul that cause me to gravitate towards using my will in that direction. Yeah. And if those emotional injuries are not released, then no matter how much I'm exercising my will, I'm going to find it very difficult. Yeah. If, I, I won't find it necessarily impossible, but I'll find it very difficult. Every time a situation comes up where that happens, then I'll gravitate towards that behaviour. Yeah. So, for example, if we look at a man with pornography, he's, he's looking at pornography all the time, then he decides that this is not good for his relationship, he realises it's driven by some internal sadness, so he decides he's going to start looking at the issue, you know, looking at the issue from a soul-based perspective. Mm. The first thing he would try to do is not engage the addiction. Yeah. So he'd get rid of all of his pornography. Yeah. Right? But inside of his soul, there's still a gravitation towards pornography because he's yet to release the emotional reason why he wants the pornography. Mm. Right? So he can use his will now, which is a soul-based function, he can use his will to stop watching porn, but unless he releases the emotional reason why he feels like watching it, mm. he's going to always feel like watching it. Yeah. Right? And this is why a lot of people say when they go to Alcoholics Anonymous or, so, or AA or something like that, they always say, oh, I am, it's a disease. Because they, cause the soul is diseased. Mm. <laughs> the soul has this feeling that the will has to be exercised in that direction. The only real solution is going to be to release from the soul the reason why it feels gravity towards, it feels a pull towards that particular behaviour. Yeah. Now, on one hand, if I'm exercising my will to stop the behaviour, that's fantastic. That means now my soul is engaged in not wanting to engage this behaviour. Mm. But if I exercise my will to deny the cause of the behaviour at the same time, I'm making my job very, very difficult because I'm, a, I'm actually suppressing the reason why I engage that behaviour. Yeah. It would be far better to first use our will to no longer engage the behaviour, but secondly, and more importantly, to engage the underlying understanding emotionally as to why I've engaged that behaviour and what emotion drives me engaging that behaviour. Mm -hmm. Once I do that, I will release from myself the reason why I feel drawn to that behaviour and then I won't feel drawn to that behaviour anymore automatically. I would have to exercise my will to do it. Yeah. I'd f have to force myself to watch porn after that. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Instead, yeah. Of, instead of it being something that I feel like pulled towards or drawn towards. Yeah. 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 And I think I've given a fairly good summary there of how the will of the soul can be exercised positively or even when... There are emotions inside of us that draw us to pull in a, in, in a negative direction or, a, yeah. or in an unloving direction. Yeah, mm. great. Yep. So, so we need to understand that control is not all negative. We can positively or negatively control emotion using our will. Yeah. The positive control of emotion using our will is that we go through the process of discovering the emotion and we want to expose it and release it. That's the positive use of our will in order to control our emotion. Mm. And we can do that, the release process, in an undamaging way. In other words, if we had rage or anger, we could control ourselves in the way in which we express this rage or anger by, by not going out and expressing it and damaging somebody, but rather going into our room and being private and expressing it and really connecting with it in a positive way. So the anger isn't really a negative emotion. It's only how we control it as it determines whether it becomes negative or not. Mm. Now, if we control it 
in such a way that we try to suppress it or, you know, or we're afraid of it or we try to control it in the sense that we like to dump it on other people and, and all of those kind of methods. Now we're controlling the emotion in a negative direction. We're using our will to make our soul worse by the expression of emotion. So we need to understand that the expression of emotion, we need to allow its expression, its experience, but we're able, using our will, to control it positively or negatively. We're able to control it in or out of harmony with love. Yeah, that's great that you've clarified that because I think a lot of us feel like when we talk about controlling emotion, because we've talked in previous topics and at length mm -hmm. about suppression and denial of emotion. Mm, different processes. Then when we use the word control, often we think, oh, control of emotion is bad. It mm. relates to suppression and denial. Mm. Um, not understanding that out of control emotion is not a positive thing either. It is... Well, it depends what emotion, <laughs> doesn't it? It's sort of like if you're out of control uh, in the throes of ecstasy, making love to a woman or something like that, then I'd say that's a very positive expression of your emotion. <laughs> but, but what you were saying to us, of, I guess what I understood from what you said though, is you're still controlling that, that, that experience through your will. You're not controlling the flow of the emotion. No, but you... You're controlling how it's flowing, to whom it's flowing, in what way it's flowing. You're not controlling its flow now. Mm -hmm. You're deciding to actually decide upon what the circumstance is that you're going to allow its expression. Yeah. So you see, the average person doesn't do this. What they actually do is they feel rage and then they decide, well, I feel rage, so I'll just dump it on the nearest possible person. Yeah. You know, if that happens to be the dog, well, they kick it. If that happens to be the, the you know, the, the wife, they yell at her. If it happens to be a child, they belt it. And, you know, it just depends on whether they feel more powerful than the person or less powerful than the person, how that emotion will be experienced. Mm -hmm. If you exercise it positively, you go, oh, I'm angry. Uh, firstly, I need to feel this anger because I don't want to bottle it up. Otherwise, it's just going to be st stored there in my soul. So I go into my room and now I've control the manner in which I'm, way, way I'm going to express this emotion. I'm still going to allow the emotion to experience, be yeah. experienced or ex expressed. And this is what I need to do because the emotion has to be experienced or expressed in order to flow. Remember, the energy has to flow. It has mm -hmm. to come out of us somehow. So mm -hmm. we let the energy flow. So we let the energy flow in the room. But we understand that the reason why we're angry is because we have some addictions here. Mm. And there's a deeper emotion that I also need to let flow. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be more painful than my anger. Mm. And it's going to feel far less powerful than my anger. And I need to allow that flow. And I need to get to that. I need to use my will to get to that emotion. I need to go there. And this is where I feel most people don't understand the positive use of their will with regard to negative emotions. Mm. Negative emotions are only negative when you use them out of harmony with the loving use of your will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, when you are unloving in the use of your will, an emotion in its expression can become negative. Mm. So for example, you can have a lovely emotion where you sexually desire your partner and she's the person you're married to or whatever and so she's your partner and so you sexually desire her. That's a loving expression of your will. You could then demand to have sex with her. Now it's become an unloving use of your will. Instantly, bang, unloving use of your will. Yeah. You went from lovingly using your will to unloving using your will in an instant mm -hmm. and probably didn't even realise it most of the time. And of course she then feels like she's being demanded, her sex is demanded of her. If she, con if she conforms, she's really almost being raped. You know, so there's, there's manipulation involved perhaps, but it's, it's not a very pleasant experience. Won't be a pleasant experience for both of you because you've now used your will out of harmony with the expression of love. Of course, assuming she doesn't have the same desire or feeling of attraction. Assuming yeah. that, assuming yeah. that. Yeah. But but even even if she does, the demand the, the demand saying, itself yeah. is yeah. unloving. Yeah. The demand that she now responds in a certain way is unloving. Yeah. So she could say no, or she could say yeah, I'll be in it. But either way, your demand was unloving. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, just feeling your feelings of sexual love for your partner is a loving expression of your will. Mm -hmm. As soon as they become demanding, you are now using them in an unloving expression mm -hmm. of your will. <laughs> and this is where you've been emphasising um, really a lot about the responsibility we have mm -hmm. for the use of our will. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that even if we have injuries, it doesn't mean that we are 
justified in using our will in this negative way. Correct. And and it's very, very important to understand that. Very yeah. important. Most people don't understand that. Most people think, oh, I feel angry, so I'm allowed to get angry. They just say I'm allowed to get angry with everybody, and, yeah. and they do. You know, they yeah. say, no, that's not what I'm saying yeah. at all. Yeah. You misunderstand completely for your own benefit. Yes. Because you really want to enter a powerful state with your rage, and it's not the goal. Yeah. So the release of emotion is actually kind of an out of control experience, but we yes. are in control of how our will is directed to yeah. experience Correct. that. How emotion. that emotion is funneled. Yes. If you like. Yeah. So, so the emotion needs to flow. Yes. You don't want to suppress it. You don't want to resist it. You don't want to deny it. It has to flow. Mm -hmm. But how you allow this emotion to flow will determine whether you're loving or not. Mm -hmm. And what I'm suggesting is there is always a loving or unloving choice that we make here. Yeah. It's a choice to either use our will lovingly and therefore the, let the emotion flow in a loving way. And so anger can flow in a loving way. Yeah. So you, you can go into your room and let the anger flow in a loving way. So it's not controlling the anger, mm -hmm. it's allowing the anger to flow, but, let, but making sure that it happens in a loving way. Yeah. You can also have a very pleasurable emotion and let it flow in an unloving way. Yeah. So you can, you know, for, so sexual desire, you can have flow in an unloving way. Love, you can have flow and turn it into something completely different, like addiction, mm -hmm. just through the expression of your will. Yeah. You can say, I love that person, and then you start becoming addicted to that person, and then you're demanding of the person, and then you're angry with the person, and you have all these expectations of the person. It's not love anymore. Mm -hmm. You've now used your will to turn that initial longing, which might have been loving, yeah. into something that's now very, very dangerous yeah. and, and difficult for her and yourself in the, in the example I've given. Yeah. So, so, yeah, this is where we need to understand that our emotion is controlled by our will mm -hmm. and I don't mean that we're now controlling it to suppress, deny or resist it or substitute for it. What I'm saying is controlled in the way in which it's expressed. We express it lovingly. Mm -hmm. So you can have an unloving emotion that's created in an unloving way inside of your soul like anger, fear and those shame, those kind of emotions and you can express it lovingly. Mm. That's the beauty of the will, of yeah. your exercise of your will. Yeah. And if we understand that, then we understand how to progress. Yeah. Because it's only when we use our will to express the emotion unlovingly that we degrade our soul. Yeah. So, so we can have an unloving emotion inside of us that we mm. express lovingly by you know, taking action to, to let it out in a loving manner. And we don't damage our soul at all. Yeah. And we can have a loving emotion that we express in our, inside of us. And we can do the, exactly the opposite. We can express it unlovingly. Yeah as a demand and an expectation, now it's become unloving immediately yeah. and we're damaging our soul and the soul of others in that moment. Yeah. And this is why people don't progress much on their life on earth so, because they, they progress a little bit and then they do something damaging. They mm -hmm. progress a little bit, damaging, progress, damaging. And I've said that many times in seminars where it's like this in the course of a day yeah. where we do a loving thing, an unloving thing, a loving thing, an unloving thing. And by the, at the start of the day, we were at this level of love and at the end of the day, we're at the same level of love. Yeah. Right? And for many people, we're just slightly lower level of love yeah. <laughs> oftentimes. And if we chose to, every single time we have an emotion, to just exercise it and allow it to flow lovingly, yeah. no matter how difficult the emotion, like shame, anger, fear, whatever the difficulty of the emotion in terms of our experience, we allowed it to flow lovingly every time, then what would happen at the start of the day? We'd be here, and at the end of the day, We'd be here with our condition of love. It's a fantastic it's, thought, isn't it, that with whatever soul damage we have within us right now, if we exercise our will in this way, in a, in a positive direction, mm -hmm. it can't get any worse than it already is. Correct. And it can only get as better. As long as we exercise our will in a loving way. Yeah. And that's the beauty. And, and the scary thing is that given the soul damage we have right now as a snapshot, if mm. we choose to use our will in an inconsistent way with regards to love mm. or just to ignore love and to feel justified mm -hmm. through our injuries, then it's going to get a whole lot worse, actually. Yes, we're mostly going to be a yo-yo, you know, where you yeah. go up and down, up and down, up and down, unloving, loving, up and down, you know, yeah. in the course of a day and our condition doesn't change. Yeah. Or, or we choose to choose, because of the damage that's within us, 
regularly to choose to do the unloving thing mm -hmm. more than we choose the loving yeah and of course then our soul is going to degrade by the end of the day yeah and unfortunately that's what happens with most people yeah on the planet so yeah. by the time we end our life our soul has degraded so much that it killed us mm. the lack of energy flowing in our bodies now is so low mm. that we died from the result of it and we're now in the spirit world with all these emotions still that we have to walk through plus the consequences of our unloving use of our will yeah and that's pretty damaging yeah and that's where most people arrive in the spirit world in the hells of the spirit world in a damaged state still having to learn that they can still use their will in a loving way yeah there was a lovely channeling i did just a few days ago with a, a lady named grace, grace i think it was and I, I think she she was i think she demonstrated there the loving use of her will actually because yeah. initially she was expressing her rage and she was swearing and carrying on expressing her rage but she wasn't that angry with me Mm -hmm. She was just raged, enraged, you know, and some of the things she'd get a bit upset about, but, you know, most of the time she was just in feeling her rage. And we took her through the expression of her rage, the expression of other emotions, eventually the expression of some sadness, and her condition improved. Mm. And that's a lovely example of somebody who needed to have the rage, could feel the rage, but needed to understand why they had it. Yeah. And, and once she understood why she had it, she could get to some of the deeper grief. Mm. Mm. No, it was a very beautiful channeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel that's a good illustration of what you can do. You yeah. can express your emotion lovingly or you can express it unlovingly, but you must always allow its expression. Mm -hmm. So what I'm suggesting is don't lock it down because that's even worse again. You know, that, mm. that's, that's like denial, suppression, shutdown. That's the worst thing you could do. But, but, it's no good either just to just to express it unlovingly yeah what god's trying to train us to do is to express our emotions no matter what they are in a in a loving manner yeah 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 mm. great thank mm. you